Now that the War of Swords has ended, Captain Kate Pride and Emma Frost are ready to clean house in the Hellfire Trading Company. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Marauders issue number 16 and find out together, shall we? So then, as the comic opens up, Bishop, the new Red Bishop of the Hellfire Trading Company, thinks that he's finally cracked the case of who killed Captain Kate. He has all his evidence lined up and makes for a clandestine meeting with Storm. Unfortunately, Aurora has to break it to him that she already knew who killed Kate and that they'd just been waiting for the whole X of Swords thing to be said and done with so they could go back to old business. In fact, as the two of them speak, Emma Frost and Captain Kate are on their way to the home of Sebastian in Shaw to see that some good old-fashioned mutant justice gets carried out. And you know what? What follows may very well be one of the finest super-powered ass whoopings ever rendered in the artistic form before. Emma and Kate are positively ruthless to Shaw. They're whooping him upside his head, whooping him in the ass, whooping him in the nuts over and over again. All of this is made possible by Emma Frost coming packing a special bullet that disables mutant powers for a short amount of time much in the same way that Shaw disabled Kate's powers before he killed her. This issue is also a great testament to just how truly terrifying and destructive Shadowcat's powers are and that how she never really uses them as offensively as she probably could. Before the two ex-ladies even decide to get down to brass tacks, they decide it's time to mess with Shaw a little bit by breaking open a bunch of his very expensive whiskey collection. And then when he tries to fight them off by putting up his jukes, Kate just punches through his guard and smacks him in the throat. It's truly hilarious. Shaw is truly 100% caught right now when Emma and Kate decide to give him an ultimatum. They can either take what they know to the council right now, he'll get found guilty and end up keeping Sabretooth company at the core of the island, or they can keep this an internal Hellfire Trading Corporation matter and Shaw will be forced to take his real punishment. Oh yes, all of that was just the pregame to the real punishment. Sebastian Shaw, naturally being a spoiled rich guy who has never suffered justice in his life, decides that he doesn't want want either of those options and jumps out a window. It's just, you know, without his powers, he doesn't make it very far. He falls flat ass on his face and Kitty very easily manages to go and take him back. But don't you dare call her Kitty to her face like Shaw did because she's Captain Kate now and doing anything else will earn you a slap from Emma. Shaw ultimately acquiesces to the two ladies' demands and he'll see his own power and influence within the Hellfire Trading Company greatly diminish but he'll get to stay alive for now. In fact, Shaw walks away with probably the funniest line of the entire issue when he says, man, you know, for a guy who ran a big international s and club, even I think this punishment is excessive. Little did he know, though, the punishment still very much isn't over. That was just Captain Kate getting her revenge, but she wasn't the only one wronged by Shaw. Lockheed the Dragon also gets to exact a pound of flesh, too. And when I say flesh, I really do mean that literally as Lockheed bites out one of Shaw's eyes. Well, you know, Marauders is a pirate book, so I guess Shaw will end up fitting right in. After probably the worst night of his life, Sebastian Shaw goes to try and get some of his scotch back, only to realize, oh wait, the Marauders laced that with the same poison that the Hellfire Junior Club laced all that important mutant medicine with. Oh yes, this wasn't just about revenge for Kate. I mean, it was mostly about revenge for Kate, but it was also about exacting justice for the crimes that Shaw committed against the rest of mutant kind, too. The poison isn't going to kill him, but it's so excruciatingly painful he will probably have to be using one of Xavier's old wheelchairs for a while, and if he does die, well, that's actually better for our heroes. Because Storm, who was also in on this whole enterprise from the start, says that were Shaw to die, she would make certain that he stays in his egg for a good long time until they're satisfied. The last step, though, in this ultimate revenge is making sure that Shaw also gets kicked off the Quiet Council, which admittedly is an interesting time to try and do it as the council is already down two members with Apocalypse staying behind in Erico and Jean Grey stepping down. It's perhaps for all those reasons and more that when it eventually is put to a vote, the Quiet Council is deadlocked on whether or not Shaw should get kicked out, which basically means he keeps his seat. <laughs> Frickin' government. And so that was Marauders issue number 16, everybody, and I really gotta take my hat off to Jerry Duggan here, who over 15 issues really managed to craft the lead-up to what was ultimately one of the most cathartic-feeling revenge missions I've read in a while. 
They'd been doing so much building up of Shaw and his backstabbing and his double dealing, so to see the House of Cards finally fall around him and get his comeuppance feels really good, even though, despite his corruption and incompetence, he still got to keep his job at the end of the day. Which, in and of itself, is probably another nice little subtle jab at the whole Krakoa, we're gonna build a better society in a better world, yet meanwhile we still keep suffering all the mistakes of the past, and in fact all the same villains of the past, too. It might be weird to say that a story that mostly involves a guy just getting his ass whooped for 20 odd pages is the feel-good story of the year, but you know, I'll put that on the dust jacket because this was my feel-good story of the year, an 8.5 out of 10. Hey there everyone, Cape Jewel again, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you see, be sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really helps drive engagement and helps me out too. Also, if you are a patron, which you can become for as little as a dollar a month, you will get exclusive content that no one else can ever see, and you'll get to see the Comic Multiverse podcast before anyone else too. You can check out all this and more down in the description. And until next time everyone, this has been Cape Jewel, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.